What is it? What are you waiting for? Your hand is bruised. It must hurt you terribly. Wasn't that the point? You wanted me to feel your pain, to watch my life crumble. Well, here I am. You got your wish, Erica. Do it. I can't. I can't hurt you anymore. I thought if you suffered that somehow I would get a sense of justice. Well, I, I don't. I, I haven't gotten that. I... Nothing will change what's happened to me. Nothing will change what's happened to my face. It won't take the pain away that I feel. Even, even your pain won't do that. It just makes it worse. did this to me because you wanted me to know how you felt. Yes, I did. You were justified in seeking revenge, to wanting me to suffer. No, I wasn't. You said you hated me. I do hate you. Then act on it. Fight back. I'm right here. You can destroy me. No. Damn it! No! Why not? I deserve it. That I understand. Is that all you understand, David? Really? Just revenge and destruction? Because someone has hurt you, you want to ruin them? Is that really why you want to destroy Adam and, and Liza and that newborn baby? I thought you'd made peace with Hayward. I mean, when he brought Colby into the world, you, you shook his hand. You yeah. forgave him. You thanked him. I was grateful that he helped the two of you, yes. No, no, he didn't just help us. I owe my life, our lives, to him. Well, then I'll send him a case of Orsini's finest champagne, but I don't want him within 10 feet of you or Colby. If I have anything to say about it. Well, you don't. I mean, this is my home now. I can have anybody over that I want to have over. And, you know, David Hayward isn't my favorite person in the entire world, but I do respect him. He brought Colby um, into the world, and he was wonderful about it. I'll never forget well, that. one good deed is not a saint make, Liza. Yeah. David Hayward preys on people's weaknesses. He's especially fond of targeting women. Okay, well, what's going on? I mean, I'm tired, but I'm not that tired. I mean, something's made you push your... I hate David Button. Do you know something and you're not telling me? Let's just say that I came into a little bit of new information. I don't want David Hayward anywhere near you or Colby. I couldn't agree more. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, what? well, the two of you actually agree on something. Well, about David Hayward, <laughs> yes, and about you being a wonderful yeah. mother and uh, Colby. Don't go anywhere. Stay here until I take Colby to the nursery. Okay. Oh, sweetie. Uh, Careful. Well, good night. Yeah. Good night. <laughs> Actually, we do agree on quite a, quite a few things, Jake. Um, the fact that Col Colby is the most precious child on the face of the earth and that she needs to be protected from harm at all costs. Agreed? I intend to protect her when the need arises. Well, you're on the right track by keeping her away from David Hayward. And we've got to make Liza realize it would be a big mistake to let that man back in our lives. I couldn't help but, uh, but overhear you earlier. Have you learned something about Hayward recently? Mm-hmm. What was it exactly? Has he done something to you? What's it to you? <laughs> Would you 
Come on, Jake. That's not as if I'm asking you to betray a friend here. What did he do to you? Adam Chandler and Liza Colby tried to ruin me. They tried to take away the one thing that ever meant anything to me, my ability to practice medicine. After you nearly murdered Adam. I mean, it's funny how you forget that little detail. No, I had the whole thing under control. Adam was never in any real danger. Then. Now is another story. But this time his undoing is all of his own making. So you still want to tell Liza that Adam is the father of her baby? You still want to blow this thing wide open? You live for her, don't you? David, you're consumed with thoughts of destruction. And why? I mean, you want to ruin them just to make them pay? Yes. For what, David? Just because they one-upped you? Just because they, they beat you? Just because they had a little power over you like I did? David, take it from one who knows it is very unsatisfying, that kind of revenge. And if it's victory you're after, believe me, it's hollow. You're free to go. at all you say I'm free I don't even know what that is anymore you say all I care about is getting revenge on Adam you're wrong about that too because unless I'm performing surgery all I can think about is the night of that storm well that makes two of us I never meant to hurt you Erica I never intended that you would get caught in the middle. You have to believe that. You have to believe how sorry I am. I'm just not sure. Imagine what she can do to you. Something happened between you and Hayward. Why won't you tell me? Why do you care? What's behind the sudden interest? There's nothing sudden about my interest in David Hayward. The man tried to kill me. I went him out of our lives forever. Don't you? You know I do. Well, then, we're on the same side, aren't we? Just tell me what you know. Why should I? Do you tell me everything? No. No, and there's obviously something more going on here. You have been on a rampage to get the goods on Hayward. You went so far as to hire Adrian Sorda of, to break into his attorney's office, even towards the place. So what, what are you so desperate about? I'm desperately trying to protect Liza and our newborn child from that viper. I thought that's what you wanted. Now, there's something else, and I'm not about to betray a confidence. Whose confidence? Nice try. Now, unlike you, Adam, I keep my word. Thanks for the brandy. It's very good. Tell Liza that I'm sorry I couldn't wait, but uh, I've got to go. I'll see my way out. you to hire somebody to tail young Dr. Jake Martin, ASAP. Put, put someone on it you know you can trust. He knows something about Hayward. With a little luck, young Dr. Martin may pave my way out of this hell I'm in. I honestly don't know if I should believe you. 
The things you've accused your mother of, they're very horrible. Yes, they are. And she's accused you of equally horrible things, David. And I have experienced your dark side. And I've experienced yours. Yes, you have. I never meant you any harm, Erica. And I feel terrible that you got caught in the crossfire. I don't want that to happen again. And I will do everything within my power to make sure that it doesn't. Even after what I've done to you? I deserved it. No one will ever know what happened down here. It's between you and me. You have my word. By now, you know that you can trust me, don't you? What took you so long? Oh, she woke up just as I was putting her in the crib. Where's Jake? Oh, he had to go. Oh. He rattled me a little bit, going on and on about David. What did he say exactly? Oh. I mean, nothing you and I haven't said already. It's just that it was fresh and kind of personal, talking about how David preyed on women. Oh, yeah, that's interesting. Well, you know how I feel about Hayward. The man's a menace. Yeah. It's just that he brought Colby into the world, and I was hoping that he changed. But since you and Jake are so adamant about it, I'll listen to you. And giving Colby the security and love she deserves is all I really care about. So if it makes you feel better, I'll stay as far away from David as I can. David Hayward is out of our lives. For good. Yes. Hey. I'll be all right. You really can go. Are you going to tell lies? Are you going to ruin their lives? Say something, David. any expenses you incur. Thanks. Mr. Sharon said you'd give me the rundown on the subject. Yes, Dr. Jake Martin. He's head of the ER team at Pine Valley Hospital. I'm assuming you don't know him or anyone in his family. No, I never heard of him, Mr. Chandler, but then I work out of Philly. Good. Anonymity is essential here. My blend. So what are you looking for from this uh, Doc Martin? All right, I'm sure he has some information on a Dr. David Hayward. He's a cardiologist. He's also on the team at, uh, at Pine Valley Hospital. I need to know that information. It would be very useful to me. Well, what kind of info? Personal dirt, professional problems, That's malpractice. You find out, damn it. That's why I'm hiring you. And the more I know, the quicker you get your results. OK. Well, all I do know is that a short time ago, David Hayward delivered Jake Martin's baby. But instead of being grateful, Martin has nothing but um, Anger against him. Interesting. Yeah. There's something going on there. I need to know what it is. How soon do you think you can come back with something? Is tonight soon enough? Yeah. I'll one other thing. Keep a very low profile, particularly around Jake Martin. Will do. Who is he? And what is he up to with Jake? Are you awake yet? No, she's still sleeping, which gives you plenty uh, of time to explain to me why you've hired a private investigator. How did you know that was a private investigator? Oh, the cheesy suit, the bent-up sedan sitting in the driveway, and you're stalling. Why did you hire him? <laughs> it's really very simple. Mm, I doubt that. I need Jake's medical history. We should have it on file in case something happens to Colby. Mm. You don't need a private investigator for that. You could just ask Jake. Well, I, I hate bothering him. No, that's not it. 
you're regressing. You know, you're lying to me about something that's obvious. You think that he has something incriminating on David Hayward, and you want it. That's why you hired a snoop. All right, it's a pretty good bet. Isn't Just call off the P.I., leave David Hayward alone, and stop fooling around with poor Jake. What are you waiting for? Would you call off the P.I.? I don't be so hasty, Liza. Don't be ridiculous, Adam. Come on, I don't like David Hayward. You don't like him, but we're not at war. We don't need espionage. All we have to do is slam the door in his face. Fine, fine, fine. I'll call his office and leave a message. Okay, you talk, I'll get that. Adam Chandler here. You get this message. Hello, darling. Hello, oh, hello, Adam. Hello, Adam. Who's my precious granddaughter? I can't believe you let her out of your arms. Oh, she's sleeping. Oh, can I go get her? She must be due for a feeding, or I can change her into one of those cute little outfits that I bought for her. I'll tell you what. I'll go check on her, because if she's sleeping, she stays sleeping. OK. So, uh, Colby's keeping you up, huh? Oh, I don't mind. Never been happier in my life. Uh, how about you? You and Stuart have a full house now that uh, Scott's home, don't yes, you? Yes, yes. Life is um, almost perfect. Almost? We have one problem. What's that? My husband. Having trouble with Stuart already? How long have you two been married? I'm not having trouble with Stuart, Adam. I'm having trouble with you. Me? Why? Because you treat Stuart like a child. You give him an allowance, and you manage his money. I mean, that's demeaning. It's practical. Stuart is a grown man. He should handle his own finances. No, no, no. I get him a very generous return on his investment. I give him a generous stipend. He can have whatever he wants. If he wants more, he can ask for it. Well, can't you see how insulting that is to have to come to you? I love Stuart. He can have anything he wants, and he knows that. Has he complained to you about our arrangement? No, no, he hasn't. Well, then why are you? Adam Stewart doesn't even write his own checks. I mean... Well, good grief, no, neither do I. That's for business managers to do that sort of thing. Um, I, I, I'm late for a business meeting. Would you please tell Liza that I'll call as soon as it's over? I'll tell her, but I'm not finished with this yet, Adam. Well, I am. I'm not going to rearrange the way we handle our funds. It's out of the question. Adam left? Uh, yes, he had to go to a meeting, Liza. He said he'd call you. Well, you haven't even said hello to your granddaughter. Oh, why are you sulking? Hello, little Kobe. I'm sulking because your mean old stepfather is an ogre. Oh, I can't Look, see what you did? I can't believe you. Why would you say something like Liza, that? I want Stuart, listen to me. I want Stuart to handle his own money, and Adam won't even consider it. Of course not. Well, Stuart's a grown man. He should be able to handle his own finances. Mother, have you lost your mind? Yes, Liza. Exactly. So why do you want to turn him into a businessman? You really want him worried about stock prices and company breakdown values first thing in the morning like Adam? Liza, Stuart has vision. He can scope out the truth of any given situation. Exactly. He has special gifts, and being a financial genius is not one of them. It wasn't that long ago he got WRCW, and it was in so much trouble, he lost it for Adam. You really want him deciding your financial future? Yes, that's exactly what I want. It seems I'm the only one who has any faith in my husband. I think you should have faith in Adam. He has protected Stuart from stock prices and predators with investment schemes. He can outmaneuver and outsmart almost every living creature who dare do business with him. Including Stuart. Mother. He loves Stuart. He would never shortchange him or, or hurt him in any way. And if you're suggesting that, you should be ashamed no, of yourself. No, I'm not suggesting that. I, I'm not. Good. Because I would rather bathe Colby than fight with you. Are you going to join me? I wouldn't miss it for the world. And when you're done, I'm going to massage every single one of her <laughs> tiny, adorable little toes, if that's OK with you. <laughs> Colby, you're an angel. David.
David, I have to talk to you. No. Nope. Erica, you need to talk to me. Listen. Is that precious little Kobe waking up? Molly, you don't have to whisper. We can hear her, but she can't hear us. Oh, there. She's waking up for a feeding. <laughs> no, Mother. It's a good hour till then, and we were just upstairs. She's sleeping. She's sleeping like a... Well, you know what? Well, you never slept. You hated it when I used to lie you down for a nap. You would scream till I thought your tiny little lungs were going to burst. I bet you love that. <laughs> Even then, darling, I think you were afraid you were going to miss something if you went to sleep. You were such a precocious child, Liza. <laughs> you, were, you were curious as a monkey, and you were into everything. Well, what did you do? Did you let me... Cry myself to sleep? No, of course not. And those stupid experts that say to do that are either childless or heartless. No, no, I used to um, pick you up and take you into my uh, bedroom, and, and I'd take the pillows, and I'd see, surround the bed with pillows, and then we'd lie down together. And then uh, you'd love to have your back rubbed. So I would start rubbing your back big circles, and then littler circles, and littler circles, and littler circles, until suddenly... You'd fallen asleep. And then you were snoring those sweet, cute little baby snores. <laughs> Mother. <laughs> oh, let Winifred get it. Oh, no, no, no. She's grocery shopping. Hi. Hello. What a surprise. Come in. And... Thank you. What happened to your hand? Oh, I burned it. Ouch. Hi, Ryan. Hello there. It's no big deal. It's fine. This is for the small fry. Oh, you didn't have to buy her a present. No, my granddaughter wants for nothing. Oh, it's no big deal. It's just one of those snow globes you wind it up and it plays a lullaby. Oh, that's sweet. I'll put it on her night table, but do you mind? I'll wait to open it until she's awake. Oh, I didn't know she was sleeping. Oh, no, 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 no. She's a whole floor away. <laughs> oh. I, this is a bad time. I could come no, back No, please, later. sit down, sit down. We were just no. listening to Baby Colby. Uh, ba oh, actually, Radio Colby. All baby, all the time. Oh. You can listen. Okay. Oh, isn't that the most beautiful sound you ever heard in your life? Ah, uh, I must be on the wrong wavelength. I don't hear anything. Hmm. Sleeping babies are sort of like dog whistles to doting grandmothers. Liza, oh. you used the G word. Oh, oh. sorry. Mimi, doting Mimi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, Mrs. Chandler, I'm, I'm glad I bumped into you. Are you still in real estate? Oh, well, I'm kind of keeping my hand in, you know. It depends on the commission and or the client. Oh, uh, well, I'm looking for an apartment. A bargain basement range, unfortunately. Oh, well, I don't usually handle low-end properties. But I could call the office and see if they've got anything available, if you'd oh, like. Oh, would you? Sure. I'd appreciate that. I'll use the phone in, in Adam's office. Sweet dreams, darling. I'll be right back. <laughs> bye bye. Thanks. Oh. So I take it if you're looking for a place, then the split with you and Jillian is final. Yeah. The divorce was the best thing for both of us. Why do you look like you lost your best friend? Adam, what are you doing here? Where's David Hayward? Damned if I know. You're the last one to see him. What well, exactly what are you implying? You remember the check we had at your house? I tried to convince you to join forces with me to bring Hayward down, and uh, then he showed up at your door, and he hasn't been seen since. Erica, what have you done with David Hayward? He was last seen at my house, and, and no one has heard from him? Not a peep. His mail is piling up at the Valley Inn front desk. The, the um, maids say that he hasn't been sleeping in his bed. Erica, famous surgeons don't just drop out of sight for no reason. Well, what do you want from me, Adam? You know where David Hayward is. If my life means anything to you at all, anything, you got to tell me what you've done with him. Erica? Oh, my God. Have you killed him? Don't be idiotic. Would I be looking for the man if I killed him? Maybe. Maybe. Maybe to draw suspicion away from yourself. Maybe. I'll tell you something, Adam. If I had killed David Hayward, I would have taken out a full-page ad in the bulletin announcing his demise. All right, all right. Fine. You've got to help me find him. 
Well, just calm down. Just don't blow an artery. I'm not going to blow an artery. I'll blow an artery. Oh, and leave your little girl fatherless? That's what's really working you up. You have so much to lose. Liza and my little girl are my whole world. He knows that. That's why I'm so vulnerable. Oh, well, that's your doing, not his. Because I love my family? No, because you are living a lie. Because Colby is not Jake Martin, she's yours. Because you switched the sperm sample. You know what? If I had any sense at all, I would tell Liza the truth. That's what I would do, and I would leave you twisting in the wind. You, you wouldn't... No, you wouldn't do that. Why not? We were married. Oh, and I have so many happy memories. Erica, you would never do anything to intentionally hurt me. Oh, really? Well, what about Liza? No, oh, forget Liza. What about Colby? Hayward is the destroyer here. That's why he instructed his lawyers to send letters to Liza and the police. D revealing the truth. If he were suddenly to turn up missing, well, he's turned up missing. Erica, if you know anything, if you have any information, I demand that you tell me. You to make demands. I mean, if you want me to help you, that'd be nice. And while we're waiting for hell to freeze over, I'll tell you what happened. Just tell me Hayward is alive. Well, he was the last time I saw him. I held him prisoner in my basement with his precious surgeon's hand stuck in an old carpenter's vice. Oh, come on. This is no time for jokes. I'm not joking. You're serious? You, you... Oh, my God. That's... Why? Why, why? why would you do that? Well, I certainly didn't have a master plan about this or anything. I mean, I hated David Hayward, and I had good reason to. But you're the one who came along. You fanned the flames, and then he showed up at my door, and that's what sealed his fate. What happened? He told me that someday I would laugh. I mean, he had the nerve to say, and I'm quoting, that someday I would look back on what happened to my face, and I would laugh. And so that, of course, revealed to me that he had no understanding whatsoever of what he had done to me. And so, of course, I like a good joke as well as anybody else. And so I knocked him out and I threw him down the laundry chute and I attached him to the vice. And when he woke up, he asked me the same thing you did. He asked me why. Well, I'll tell you why. I wanted David Hayward to feel the same pain that I'm feeling, to feel the the same sense of helplessness that I feel. I wanted him to mourn the loss of something vital, of something precious. Because when you have this gift from God and somebody takes it away from you, there is this emptiness and, and nothing can ever fill that. I wanted him to really know what that emptiness feels like. I'm almost afraid to ask this, but did your scare tactic work? Well, if you mean, does David Hayward have a conscience? Yes, I think he does. And is he sorry for what he did to me? Definitely. And ultimately, we learned that we have some things in common. So I set him free. But, but you still don't trust him. I don't know. I don't know who the real David Hayward is. I don't know if he really is the horrible, heartless monster that his own mother says he is, or, or whether it's Vanessa who's lying. I don't know. And so that's why I'm here. I am looking for David. I'm, I'm looking for the truth. I'm fine, Liza, really. Really? My marriage to Julian was just a big farce. Shotgun wedding with your finger on the trigger. Ooh, guilt. Just call me lock and load Liza. You were going to fire me for taking kickbacks if I didn't tie the knot with Jillian. Look, the exiled princess was going to marry Scott to get her green card. I couldn't let that happen to Adam's nephew. So you just picked a groom at random and it was me. Hmm. Just because I was trying to get some freebies from our sponsors. Of course, why you didn't fire me, I'll never understand. I think I had a sixth sense about this true love with you and Jillian. Your farce turned into your fairy tale because you loved her. 
And her love changed you. I don't know about that. No, I know about that. You blew into town this cocky, arrogant sales jockey. You were looking for maximum return on minimum investment. You were out to sucker people, and now you are the most generous and caring person I have the pleasure to know. So there's really no chance that you and Jillian will work it out? We blew all of our chances. You mad at me for making you marry Jillian? If I had to do it all over again, I wouldn't change a single thing. Maybe the ending? That one true love stuff, that may be true for other people, but uh, not for me. I wouldn't write off love just yet. Jillian and I loved each other. We did, but it didn't solve our problems. Look, just because you and Jillian hit a few speed bumps along the way, it doesn't mean you give up. I mean, look at everything that Adam and I had to overcome. You and Adam are in a different league altogether. I mean, look at you. You, you radiate happiness. I've never seen you like this. Really? Even when uh, I beat the big competition on a leading story? Even then. <laughs> you know, I have to tell you, I used to think that the biggest wonderful news and the major coup was uh, 30 share or, I don't know, a real life as TV land beat by a mile. You find peace in a million moments every day in every way. And there are perfect moments, and they're moments. Like when I lay my daughter down to sleep, and I look from her to Adam sleeping in the bed. And when I get in, and I'm starting to fall asleep, all I can hear is their breathing. And I just thank God. I mean, it's everything I never knew I ever wanted. And Jillian loves you, and you love her. And it can be everything. It can be enough if you just let it be. I'm happy for you, Liza. I am truly, truly happy. But it's not the same for me and Jillian. I need to get a jump start on my future, and I have to face the fact that I have to do that alone. OK. Well, I might have a key to your future. Furnished. You interested? I learned some very interesting things about David Hayward when he was my house guest. I got some very rare glimpses into his character. David told me some things about his father. And so at least now I understand a little bit about what motivates his, his despicable behavior. Sounds like the same old whiny sob story to me. Didn't get a tricycle when he was three, so he's scarred for life. No. David's wounds are not superficial. Neither are yours, Erica. Frankly, I'm, I'm stunned that you are sitting here making excuses for the man who destroyed your face. I'm not making excuses. I'm merely saying that, that perhaps he's not the heartless monster that we thought he was. What did he tell you? That was personal. He told me that in confidence. <laughs> Confidence? How does someone like Hayward rate your confidence? Erica, if you have information that will help me bury this swine, please tell me. Look, I don't know if everything David told me was true. But if it is, if the horror he described to me is even partially true. Oh, my God. He really got to you, didn't he? I beg your pardon. David Hayward didn't get to me. He did something to impair your judgment. He told me a very, very sad and very distressing story about what it was like to be the son of Vanessa Bennett. Cue the violin. No, it wasn't like that. Look, David told me that 
He blames his mother for his father's suicide. And bad potty training did the rest. I don't want to pity David Hayward. I want to cut him off at the knees. Well, then you're going to have to do that without my help. You realize my entire future is at stake here? Yes. And I also realize that you used Liza, no matter how you try to justify your motives. But Liza loves me. Well, then there should be no problem. She'll accept the fact that you invaded her body without her consent, and you'll live happily ever after. She won't do that, and you know it. And that's what you should be worrying about, Adam. Liza. Not David or me or whoever else knows your dirty little secret. Liza. Okay, what did you get on Hayward? I tailed Jake Martin as per your orders. And? I made out like I had this major pain in my gut. So I got to hang out in the ER for a while, but then Martin caught me. He caught you? I think he knew I was faking. Just like my mother. She could always tell when I was trying to put one over on her. Remind me to have Barry Shire assassinated. I heard Martin talking to this dude, Ryan Lavery and they were dissing Doc Hayward. It's my impression that whatever Martin knows about Hayward, this guy Lavery knows it too. Yeah, what else? Lavery seems to have some, I don't know, unresolved conflicts as far as this Hayward character's concerned. Uh, I could tell by the sound of his voice. But it's my conclusion that Lavery could be a gold mine of incriminating information. It may be a lot easier to access than Jake Martin. What else do they talk about? That's it. You don't know what their problem is with Hayward? Well, it's only my first day on a job. And your last. See Barry Shire for your severance pay. Ryan, I found a small studio apartment for you, but I'm afraid it's not in the prime location. Well, that's okay. We got Ryan taken care of. He's going to sublet my place. Whoa, darling. That's yeah. a brilliant idea. Isn't it? Yeah. Uh, I... I appreciate that, but I don't think I could swing that kind oh, of Oh, no, no, no. Much. Don't worry about it. There's no mortgage. All you have to do is make sure you meet the maintenance and utilities. I don't know what to say. Say yes. You could move in tonight. Thank you. Well, you're welcome. <laughs> you said you wanted a launch into the future, so the perfect springboard is a nice uh, furnished loft in Midtown. I still want to find a way to pay you back for this. Not Thank necessary. you. I've got an idea. I know how you can pay her back. Stuart and I have been wanting to throw a welcome home party for Scott. Uh, now, that new club you work at, what's it called? Sales of Salsa, SOS. Yeah, well, it sounds perfect. Do you think they could handle a large party? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I just need the date. I'll clear it with Haley and Mateo. Oh, Colby just woke up. Uh-oh. Come on, Donnie. No, I'll go. Uh, no, I'll go with you, too. Oh, you know what? When I come down, I'll bring you the keys, and we got to talk about the trash compactor. It's a little temperamental, and I'll explain to you about the... Okay. Uh, Hold on, Colby. Hey. Mimi and Mother are coming. <sighs> By some miracle, the loft keys were the first place oh. I looked. So I'll call the super, and I'll tell him you're moving in. Thank you, Liza. I really, really appreciate it. I tried to thank your mother, too, for making all those phone calls, but she just kind of raced right out of you. Oh, she probably wanted to tell Stuart about getting the SOS for Scott's party. Uh, you two officially broke the land speed record going upstairs to Colby. No, oh, yeah, well, I've shaved two seconds off my best time. Oh. <laughs> well, the kid's off to a great start. Well, a good start's important, but it could finish his, too. Thank you, Liza. Again. You're welcome. Listen, the trash compactor, it mm -hmm. cycles through twice, and then you have to jiggle that a oh. latch thing oh, okay. is temperamental, like I told you, but All you'll right. figure it out. Oh. 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 Hi, hey. Mr. Chandler. Welcome home. You're nice early. Nice <laughs> uh, Ryan, you're just the man I was looking for. Totally. Uh, she's uh, sleeping. Oh. Uh, why did you, do you want to see Ryan? Why is he the man you needed to see? Because I'm in his debt. With, with, with all the help you gave Haley? Oh. Hey, Haley's, Haley's my best friend. Believe me, she's done a whole lot more for me. <laughs> well, you you uh, helped her through a very difficult time. And with the restaurant? Nightclub. Uh, yeah, <laughs> nightclub. Yeah, well, you've been invaluable. And w with Matteo, um, otherwise engaged. Right. Well, I guess I better get back to work. If Liza and I can, I can do anything to help you out, perhaps um, uh, bring some people? Uh, I 
I, I'm sorry, I thought I, I heard her. Would you, it was good seeing you. Would you tell me what happens with the loft? I will. Thank you. Okay. Again, thank you. Yeah. Uh, Ryan, uh, wait a minute. Oh, if, if, you, if you want to bring people to the club, uh, you just call and make a reservation. Oh, yes, okay, we'll do that. We'll do that. Uh, why don't you come and sit down? Uh, why? I need your help. <laughs> with what? Ridding our town of David Hayward. I, uh, I can see you hate David Hayward as much as I do. I can tell it by looking at your face. Wouldn't you like it if David Hayward were ridden out of town on a spike? Wouldn't make me unhappy. Good. But then I think it would be a good idea for us to um, pool our resources. You tell me what you have on him, and I'll share my story with you. Mr. Chandler, whatever my problem is, was with David Hayward, it's my problem. Personally, I don't care what you do with him. As far as I'm concerned, the man does not exist. <laughs> that's, a, that's a very, very wise and uh, sensible statement, but I don't believe it for one second. Come on, don't sit on your feelings, man. Let him out. After what he pulled on Jillian, I'm not about to dirty my hands on that bastard. Jillian. Jillian and David Hayward. You know, I read that a child born right now is very likely to have a life expectancy of over 100 years. Did you hear that? She will see the 22nd century. And we will live on, too, in her mind and her, her, the way what she thinks about us, right into the 22nd century. Well, that was a very deep and philosophical thought. Well, perhaps a newborn is making me philosophical. It makes me very lucky. I have a perfect daughter and I hope a perfect wife. Perfect wife. Mm -hmm. I have every intention of acquiring that perfect wife <laughs> at her earliest possible convenience. Well, I'll see what I can do.